2020 will undoubtedly be a year that future generations will read about as some great tragedy within a history textbook. An outbreak of a virus leaving the entire world afraid to leave their home. The new coronavirus numbers are getting worse. An uprise for social justice. Say discriminates against black Americans. A universally laughed at presidential debate. The best testing in the world by far. As well as a gender reveal gone wrong. More than 200 people airlifted to safety. Such events have left the people of the U.S. in a state of panic, in a state of fear, uncertain of what the future holds. According to a study conducted by the Pew Research Center, around 25% of participants claim to have had trouble paying their bills since the coronavirus has struck the country. And while many of the stories of suffering and loss have been made widespread throughout the media and local news sources, there are a few demographics that were impacted by this pandemic that history may end up forgetting, whether it be due to their stories being less tragic or simply being swept under the rug. My name is Amaya Lopez. Well, my name is Chris Baldy. Hi, my name is Jessica Rin. I recently graduated this spring. I graduated in class of 2020. Graduating during a pandemic. The class of 2020. Miss graduation, which stinks. Uh, you can't, you know, go to bars or hang out with people, which stinks. It's kind of like we were like the the birds leaving the nest or whatever, and then all of a sudden it just thunderstorms or you know, like you know like when the first time you try and fly they had to go out and find jobs in the middle of a pandemic <laughs> um i think that's kind of ridiculous to have to like we never would have thought that would have been a thing none of us prepared for that while this demographic of individuals hasn't necessarily been met with losses such as death or bankruptcy they are nonetheless a group of individuals that were hit rather hard by the virus in march 16 2019 lasalle university in north philadelphia was expected to have their spring break Little did everyone know that the break would be extended for the rest of the semester. They said that we just were going to end the semester. Everyone was kind of in the air, so it wasn't a South specific thing. Um, obviously, no one kind of had details, and it was kind of a daily change every single day, whether COVID's getting better or COVID's getting worse. With their senior years ending abruptly, three LaSalle graduates are tasked to navigate the adult world, a task that is normally difficult as it is, but are now faced to do so under quarantine. My name is Amaya Lopez. I graduated in class of 2020. I am from Whittier, California. I was a part of the LaSalle dance team while I was at school, and I worked in the human resources department. So COVID had a big effect on where I was going to school after, or what I was gonna do after LaSalle, if I was even gonna be able to go to school afterwards, where I was gonna live and things like that. So I remember when LaSalle canceled the rest of the semester, I was at my boyfriend Matt's house and we got the email and I was completely shocked. Um, I really didn't expect it. I was sad, not only because I was leaving like this whole other life behind, but I wasn't gonna get to finish my senior year. I wasn't gonna be able to go through graduation like what I was looking forward to for the past four years. So I applied to five different colleges um, for my master's degree, one of which was St. Joseph's University in Philly. That was my first choice. It was actually the first school I got accepted to also. I was really excited for it. But then once the pandemic hit, I was worried because I wasn't gonna be able to pay for a private another two years of private education. So during summer, I was really, it's all I could think about, like where I was gonna go to school the next year, what I was gonna do with my life. It like consumed my life. I was always thinking about it, always thinking about like, I like was just picking at it constantly, like thinking like, what am I gonna do? How am I gonna do this? Like, it was, it was a big thing. <laughs> so right now I am attending Fresno State. I decided, you know, it's still time for me to move out. I'm 22 years old. <laughs> I need to get out. I have a degree now to have a job. I am in a full-time master's program. Like I needed my own space. COVID has affected my future because it. I could have been in Philly right now. I could have been with my boyfriend in Philly, but I'm on the other side of the country. I'm comfortable with my education and I know I'll have a job after this but I don't know where I'm gonna be. I'm in Fresno right now. I wanna be back in LA eventually. Like, and COVID-19 might have some effects on that that I don't even know of right now. I was thrown into the situation where no one knew the right answer to. And I'm very, I'm very much someone that needs to know the plan, needs to have an answer to everything, needs to know what's gonna happen. That was really stressful for me. Um, it was kind of, looking back on it, it's kind of ridiculous how stressful it is. Like, 
typically I feel I feel like a person wouldn't be that stressed, but like for me, that's just like how I am. That's how I'm wired. It also made me more grateful for what I do have. Um, you know, I got to continue my education. I got to still go into a master's program. I still got to move into my own apartment, and that's a lot of that wasn't possible for other people because of the pandemic. So. It made me realize that I do have a lot that you know my parents say were able to provide for me, that I was able to figure out, and I was able to like you know still I was really grateful for still being able to go to school, even in the middle of all this. Hi, my name is Jessica Rin. I recently graduated this spring with my bachelor's in public health. Um, I was an RA. I was in 5U sorority. So I think I had a little bit of a different experience with COVID at LaSalle because I was a public health major. So before most people were talking about it on campus, all of my professors were talking about it. Um, so I feel like a month before everything shut down, like I was walking around like, why am I even doing work? Like, I know it's all gonna shut down. Like, I don't know, it was like this really weird feeling. I was really worried about you know, what I was going to do, um, how I was going to be able to get a job. But at the same time, I know that I'm really lucky because I didn't have, like I knew no matter what happened, I would be able to live with my parents. The beginning of quarantine was definitely very bizarre. I feel like at least once a day, maybe like multiple times a day, I would have like this just like, what the heck is going on moment where I'm like, this is my reality. There's a global pandemic happening. And I don't like, don't know what my future is gonna bring. You know, like I would have like one of those just like, what moments where I would feel like a lot of emotion at once. Um, and then the rest of the time was just super boring. The highlights of my day were when I took walks. <laughs> I felt like whenever I tried to think about what I wanted to do or what my plans were, they were kind of thwarted by the fact that there was a pandemic going on. You know, like that was just the big elephant in the room that like I had no, I had absolutely no idea how that was going to affect um, what I wanted to do. And also like, it's kind of hard to focus on, you know, like some like, like realistic things or logical things or like future plans when if you're so like if you have a lot of anxiety surrounding like the fact that literally there's a global pandemic happening and you don't know what's going to happen in the next year how that's going to affect the job market how it's going to affect like you personally like how it's going to affect america you know like that that's like real and looking back i think i wasn't in the best place like mental health wise which i think most people kind of dealt with you know i've been diagnosed with some mental health um disorders and I for the most part have had like for the past few years had like a really good handle on them. Um, I'm on medication, it's worked out really good for me. Um, but you know, sometimes there's like really stressful times in life where, you know, like I kind of like let slip some of those like issues. And I think it definitely like it was very stressful and I think it just kind of uh, like my mental health took a bit of a hit. I used to like, I, there was a point, I think like maybe like one and a half months in where I started to feel like really claustrophobic. Like, I don't know, like I like just thinking about the fact that I wasn't doing anything started to like really like panic me. Like, and it sounds so silly, but like one time, like I had to leave dinner because I like, they were like, my family was talking about it. And I was just like, this is too much. Like I'm like, started to have a panic attack. I was like, I feel so confined. And I think that's one of the reasons why I really liked the walks because it was a chance to like even see people. Like there were so many people in the neighborhood that would like go on walks that you'd go like go walk by. But yeah, you know, I'm just taking the time to figure out what I want to do. I haven't decided yet. And there's some anxiety surrounding that um, because I think when, when you're like not productive, it doesn't make you feel good. Like if you feel like you're not taking active steps forward and it feels kind of weird for me to just be like, oh, like I have this job and I'm living at home and I'm saving money. But like at the same time, I feel like I'm not going forward. And it like, so I feel like an anxiety to make make some decisions like, oh, what type of program would I want to go into? What would the timeline be for that? Um, you know, and then how do I actively make that happen? I think that this is a really big thing to be living through, and I think that definitely has had an effect on me. I'm not totally sure what all of those effects are at the moment, 
Um, but you know, like this is a time in history where people are going to be like in the future, people that didn't live through this are going to be like, oh, what was that like? You know, whatever. Like this is a big thing to be living through. Um, that's one thing. <sighs> Well, my name is Chris Baldy. A little bit about myself and my experience at LaSalle has kind of been, um, I got to run the Saxby's Cafe on campus, uh, took part in RC Executive Board, which was really great, um, and was president of student government. So that's kind of my experience at LaSalle. Story with COVID-19, especially relating to LaSalle, was definitely a little different. So obviously graduating during a pandemic is not ideal for anyone. It was definitely different to be the student body president during the initial onslaught of COVID-19. It was definitely very odd to kind of go online to be still meeting with everybody uh, via Zoom, kind of figuring out that along with balancing learning how to take classes on Zoom, uh, along with doing job interviews on Zoom. So Zoom definitely became a major part of, you know, our senior year. So being student body president during the you know, beginning of the pandemic was, you know, it was odd. It was kind of a lot of hearing a lot of students on social media saying different things and asking all these questions and obviously me not having any answers because I had no idea what's going on. So kind of feeding that to like Anna Allen, Dr. S, kind of communicating with them, like here's a bunch of questions. And then sometimes they would be like, you know, here's an answer. Or they'd be like, we're not answering that. We don't have an answer. Kind of bugging them constantly. So it was kind of trying to be a mouthpiece for them like to the student body and less less official way than those formal like, emails that Dr. Hanish sent. One of the things that happened kind of quick was the lack of balance between like school and home because teachers were kind of like, oh, you're home. Like what else have you got to do? So I'm pretty sure that I actually had like more work in those last like three months than I had the first three and a half semesters. Um, and I wish I was exaggerating. Like I had almost several hundred pages of papers to write like a week. Yeah, some of the thoughts going through my head regarding post-grad were it looked like we were having the worst job market since 2008 when 2020 was supposed to be like a huge flourishing job market. Uh, so that was really well depressing, honestly. I had applied for a job at LaSalle, which no longer exists because they just couldn't hire for it, they couldn't afford it. Uh, I had other job offers rescinded and it was definitely a different kind of world interviewing in person and interviewing on Zoom. It's different etiquette, different dress, different ways of like focusing on the camera and everything. So that was definitely very odd. Still trying to navigate the world at this point. I've been looking for jobs. There aren't a great number. I spent like months fighting with unemployment. Not really fighting, but just not being able to get through to unemployment. So that was definitely not the most fun experience either. Definitely think down the line COVID impacts career paths because I feel like even entry level positions now, you need three to five years of experience for an entry level position. And now class of 2020 just couldn't get that experience for the most part. I think I read a study, obviously there's no, most of these studies probably aren't based on too much at the moment, but it was like 2020 class graduates were getting pushed back probably five to 10 years career wise, just because they aren't getting that experience, which is brutal. Definitely was not a fun fact. Uh, I think COVID and like impact of COVID as far as me personally, I think at first it, I was became a little more cynical. Definitely felt like everything was kind of out of my control. You know, applying for jobs and not being there, even getting jobs and then being like, oh, actually offer's gone now, like we can't afford to have that position anymore. You know, when everything feels out of control, it can be hard to keep pushing on. I think over the past like two months or so, I've definitely been like feeling a little bit more resilient you know, some of the teachers at LaSalle are really just great people. Obviously, there are some that aren't, but I think the majority are just like really great people. They care about students. There wasn't a time where I couldn't just contact like Dr. Glatzer and him write a letter of recommendation for me, which he probably wrote eight or nine of for Anna Allen or uh, Father Burning. You know, there's a lot of people there that just genuinely care about students. And I feel like having those connections and connections to like a larger LaSalle on my body um, are definitely like positives, some things to look forward to. Humans are naturally reluctant to change. Life will often throw us curveballs that knock us down, but we will always find a way to get back up. It was hard. It was hard, but it also it wasn't like the worst thing ever. I've definitely been 
like feeling a little more resilient. The class of 2020 may seem like a demographic hit lightly by the pandemic compared to others. However, they show us that we can overcome any major change that comes our way. Hopefully, we can move on from this, and, and I think we will. You know, there's a lot of people there that just genuinely care about students. So yeah, I really, I really think that it was important to have those people around me that were able to help me get through it. <laughs>